Hello and welcome to uh, Film Exologist, uh, the place on the internet thingy where uh, we get organized. And on today's episode, what we're going to have is I'm going to do a video about uh, work organization and how to set up a workshop for maximum productivity. So, the, so this is this is a, a, a quite a quite a personal thing for me in terms of. I've been doing this, I've been doing collaboration for, well, a number of years now, more than eight years, and I've, I've had several iterations of, of shops and different types of, of work organization, and over the years I found that there are some things that work well and some things that work really badly, and therefore those are the things that I wanted to address when I did this, which is kind of my new workshop so therefore I'm gonna walk you through certain things that are important for doing this type of work or how to organize a workshop I have some general tips as well <coughs> so so le le let's get on to it so first first things first one of one of, one of the things if you, if you can see here well, what this is this is a thermometer and um, and so it measures the relative humidity as well. Now this is quite important because one of the things that I wanted to do in this workshop was to have a temperature controlled environment. So this was, this is a, this is kind of outwardly is a shed. Uh, this is fully insulated, uh, vapor barriered and therefore temperature controlled environment. Uh, and the reason why I need to control the humidity is so that the bits don't rust away. So that's kind of tip number one. If, you, if you're going to be doing this in some sort of garden building or anything, you need to make sure to properly insulate it and make sure that you have a control over the humidity. In my case, I've got a dehumidifier in the workshop. I'll show you it right now. There you can see it. So that's my unit for dehumidification. Uh, which is uh, which is quite important for me uh, again to keep humidity levels in check now that we're here well, well what I can show you is my kind of tip number one numero uno is always 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 try to maximize the storage space on height yeah why because if if you, the, this space over here would normally be dead uh, in any workshop, so by putting by putting some shelves and all of this is is like wooden shelves, so they can be uh, they can be disassembled if necessary. And I don't know if you can see this up here, but this is uh, remains of my old shed, so I've recycled some of the wood. Also, these are just nails, and I use them to put tools. And here's my 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 second tip. My second tip, which is, this is one of my work areas, and I've got all the tools that I need for doing the assembly of carbs at the at easy reach um, my hands. Yeah. So obviously, the tools that I use the most have to be the closest. To your hands as possible. The other thing, which is something that I that I showed uh, that I showed in previous episodes, which is that I always always use these plastic boxes, uh, and what they what they are is that they represent to me a unit of work. So each one of those plastic boxes house one carb, one project, one whatever. So they are they are the ones that I just grab the box, I take it to another area in the workshop and I'll show you now in a minute what those areas are. So it is important for work kind of system to have something that you can self-contain a project or a bit of work. Now going to this area now, so I've, I've created this area, again this is just a kitchen worktop, that's it, simple. Uh, this is a this is a wooden framework that I kind of constructed for for this 
uh, specific purpose and what this is this is basically my parts area so i've got all of the kind of weber del orto holly stuff in here i've got all my manuals in here i've got a little light um, and i've got this boxes again boxes always labeled so that i can easily identify wh what's in the box and these things that i really like what i can do here is i uh, if i'm if i'm building something i can just go here and say okay i need some bolts i need some screws long bolt screws which i've got here i need a float i need i don't know some metering block gaskets whatever it is fuel inlets i've got I've, i've got everything there so therefore i can i can collect all my parts here and have them ready to put on the other on the other side now before we go to the to the next area of the workshop one, one of the things that that i need to clarify as well is that this workshop is divided logically in in two halves so and one part i call it the clean part and the other one i call it the dirty part why because in in one area of the workshop is the area where i do all the kind of grinding cleaning all the dirty work that's that is messy and in here i only do kind of the clean stuff the final assembly and this is to try to preserve uh, this difference in the workshop so that I can so so that when, when I come to fit the parts they are in a in a clean state and everything around here is clean so let's have a look at the <coughs> dirty part of the workshop as you can see this is my uh, kind of metal working uh, bit I have got obviously my pillar drill which came from the from the previous workshop and I also now added a kind of grinding stone but the grinding stone really is portable so I've got it I've got it in this in this wooden table that I made and um, so it's bolted there and I can take that in and out uh, as I will but it's stuck there stuck in there for storage reasons now in here obviously as you can see as i said before on high is storage um it's a storage rack um and here obviously we have got my ultrasonic cleaner and i've got my uh, my vice um and this is the area where i do some of the kind of cleaning and grinding and therefore this area can get quite dirty obviously it's called as you can see it's on light i went full led with all the lights uh, on the workshop and here is the blasting area so this is kind of the blasting cabinet with a dust extracting solution that i put that i put that i stacked them one on the other so it's just a hoover uh, with, with with this thing connected but it's it's much tidier than what it used to be in in my old workshop so this is a fundamental tool for me the the blasting cabinet absolutely crucial tool now this this cabinet what it what it has is i have an independent regulator you can see it here this is a filter uh, regulator and water trap and i can regulate this and this which is the general the general airline for for the workshop independently and you can see here that it has its own regulator and filter so for me it's sometimes it becomes quite important to be able to to regulate this two separate so the blasting cabinet can be at one pressure and this can be at a completely different pressure obviously i've got I've, i've got an electric heater and this is good enough for the workshop so that means that it's well insulated so i'm i hope you you got something out of it um i'm i'm i'm, I'm always wanting to 
to maybe learn from other people if you've got any tips on how to organize your workshop or that kind of stuff please you know put them down in the comments uh, i'm always happy to keep you know developing this space as i as i as i go along so anyway i hope you enjoyed this got something out of it thank you very much for watching i'll see you on the next episode